I'd like to show you an example with that vertical circle because those are ones that cause a lot of people problems. So here we have a mass M and it's tied to a string. So can you imagine that? So there's, a, there's an invisible string here. You're sort of moving it around here. And the string has a, it goes in a vertical circle of radius R with a constant speed V. So the question is, find the tension in the string at the lowest and the highest points of the circle. So I've sort of labeled them. So we've got highest point and lowest point here. So maybe let's do the uh, lowest point. Maybe we'll start with that one. So we'll say lowest here. Whoops. Hold that there. Here we go. So let's see here. Lowest. What happens at the lowest point here? Well, maybe we could start by drawing the vectors. At the lowest point, what's going on? Well, we've got uh, tension in the string. I mean, it's going upwards, right? So we call it T, I don't know, 1, I guess, for you know lowest point here. 1. Uh, but acting on, on it, of course, is a real mass M, so it's got a downwards force of mg. You know, that's its downwards gravitational force. Remember, because F equals MA? So tension is a force going upwards, and gravitation is downwards. Do you notice I've drawn the tension bigger than mg? Uh, there's a reason for that. Um, so here we go. Well, we can do this. Well, then from this, can you see we can actually figure out what's the net force? You know, the net force on something, is just, isn't it just the difference or the you do the vector summation of the forces? So F net, uh, in this case, here will be, let's say, T1 minus mg, if that's okay with you. We can just say that because they're subtracted. They're in opposite directions. But to remember very carefully, though, if you do F, F net, uh, remember F net, the net force right here, it's going to be um, a circle. There's going to be a circular force. So that F net, you know, you're used to saying F net equals ma. In this case, it's not ma. It's mv squared over r. So that's why the F net is mv squared over r, and that's going to equal t1 minus mg. So from there, I don't know if that made any sense, I just set F net equal to the centripetal force. That's the net force. Uh, then I just want to solve for T1. So I get T1 by itself. Let's see, I can move the mg over. So I have mv squared over r plus mg. And this is what I have here. I mean, this is, I think, as simple as I can make it. I can, of course, combine the m's if I wanted to, but I think this is good enough. So we'll say this is the tension 1 depending on the mass and the radius. Let's do it for the highest point now. So what happens at the highest? Well, at the highest, uh, let's look at the vectors here, what's going on. If you look at this at the highest point, remember, this thing right here is going down. It's got mg still going down. See that still, that same mg still acting downwards? Except the tension, if it makes sense, the tension is also acting downwards. Now, this tension can be different. It's going to really depend on the speed. Because do you see that? You could spin it faster and you have more tension. You could spin it slower until the tension becomes zero and it's sort of, or even less than that, and then it actually doesn't make it over the circle. So this T2 can vary. But what I want you to see though is that this net force, we can still do a net force like this right here. So the net force, in this case right here, won't it just be, it'll just be this T2 and this MG, and they're both going to be in the same direction. So we can just say it's T2, you know, they're both added. They're both in the same direction. So you could say it's T2 plus mg. I mean, you could have, I guess, said they're both negative, but we can just say that they're the same. They're in the same direction. So therefore, we can say mv squared over r is equal to T2 plus mg. And by that, then we can say, fine, then T2 equals, let's see, it's going to be mv squared over r minus mg, because I'm going to move that one over. And this is going to be my final um, tension for T2. So now we've got the tension at point one, we've got the tension at point two here, and there we go. So let's see what we can do with this. We want to calculate the minimum speed so that the string never goes slack. That may not sound so obvious. What's going on is that it all depends on the speed at which you sort of rotate this thing, right? If you rotate this thing really, really slowly, like I said, tension T2 can technically be zero. Do you see that? Like it goes slack, it goes slack when tension 2 equals 0. Does that make sense? Or if it's less than 0, uh, then it's it's slack. Well, this happens exactly here, right? So that means if the tension is less than that, then, you know, it's not even going to make it. If if it's uh, if the t tension is more than that value 0, then it's uh, going to be a not slack string. So basically, we're going to try to set this right here. So we want and the key thing here is we want T2 to be greater than zero, if that makes any sense. We want that tension to be, you know, more than nothing. 
So you can see all we have to do now is we take this equation for T2. You know, we go and borrow that equation again. So from up there, we had T2, uh, which equaled mv squared over r minus mg. And we just set that greater than zero. So to see how now I can just do a little bit of algebra with this right here, I can move maybe my mg to the other side just to make it a little bit uh, simpler. So I just want to show you, you can still do algebra with inequality. Some people aren't comfortable with that, but that's fine. Do you see I add the mg to the other side? If I multiplied, I would have switched the sign of this inequality, but I didn't multiply by anything. I just added mg. So that's why the mg goes to the other side. Then it becomes more obvious the m's cancel out. And then I can get v squared um, is greater than r times g. Does that make sense? I can move the r. I can multiply both sides by r to get it up top. I guess technically then I could say that has to be greater than uh, square root of rg, technically. You know? So you could say something like that. So as long as your speed is bigger than the square root of uh, the radius times g, then the string will never be slack. It didn't seem all that simple, this kind of question. That's why I think it was a really good idea to show you how to deal with a vertical circle. Because certainly the first couple of exams from the um, IB, they've certainly asked vertical circles, at least in May 2016, November 2016, they certainly have. So I think it's important to be able to deal with them.